Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are making an electrolysis bucket. And so this will be a fun one. We're gonna be actually going through um, how do you make it, how do you use it, where to use it, what not to do. Um, and this will be a little bit different because we are gonna be using some power tools because well, we're making a power tool. So the way this works is you put the item you're trying to take the rust off down into the bath and it runs electricity through it. So the negative connects to what you're working on. It goes through the fluid and will take rust off of the part and then will connect the rust to the positive electrodes that are into the water. Now this is great for removing surface rust and even deep pitted rust. Um, depending upon how long you leave it in here, it'll take off more and more rust. Now if I were to leave this in there for a long time, it would slowly start taking away the actual steel. But as long as you keep an eye on it and you don't let it sit for a few days, uh, you'll actually find that you can remove rust very nicely. And one of the interesting things about this is if you do it just enough, you can still leave the patina on there and the coloring on the steel just removing the rust. And then if you take it even farther, you can take it down to bare steel and get really nice and shiny. So it's one of those things you can adjust very easily to set up different amounts of material you want to take off in cleaning your parts. So let's actually dive into how to make this. First thing I want to do is cut up some rebar. This is half inch rebar that you can buy from the big box store. It cuts rather quickly with a hacksaw. And I want to cut it to the length of the same length inside the bucket. It doesn't want to stick up past the top. So if I put the rod down in there and I mark it about a half inch shorter than the bucket, uh, that way it will fit down in there without sticking up. If you do want to be able to put a lid onto this, you're probably going to want to make it about an inch down below the inside of the, the top of the bucket. So I'm going to cut off six or seven of these so you can see how they will then fit down and be a little bit shorter than the inside of the bucket. Next thing we want to do is drill a hole through the rebar and then through the bucket. I'm going to use a file to file down a little bit of a flat spot. Makes it much easier to get the, uh, the drill and bit on there. And yes, I could do this with an egg beater drill bit or a bit embrace. Um, oh look, I did go all the way through with that. Oh, um, don't, don't look at that yellow thing behind me. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it with a bit embrace if you really want to, but uh, the drill just makes it much, much easier. So um, grab a uh, battery powered drill and run these through. I just used a, a quarter inch hole for a quarter inch bolt. Don't need anything much bigger than that. Just needs to, uh, to, to connect to the outside. So I'm going to drill one hole through the end of each of these and then drill a corresponding hole through the bucket. This will allow me to put a bolt through the outside and then into the bar. Um, so that I can connect the electricity to these all the way around. Hey, look at that little quarter inch bolt. Uh, I believe it was an uh, oh, inch and a quarter long. It does help if you use an awl and uh, make a little dent there, holds the bit in place so it doesn't wander off course. So once we get these all drilled out, clean them off, make sure there's nothing sticking on them or something to sharpen or to cut you. That is the, the vast majority of the work that has to be done on this. Everything else is just literally hooking it up. So if you can drill some holes through rebar, you can make electrolysis bucket. With all that cleaned off, we can put these into the bucket, drill the holes through the bucket, and I'm just going to evenly space them around the inside of the bucket. There's nothing special about them as long as there is enough um, places for the, the positive anodes um, to connect. Next thing I want to do is actually grab some wire. Um, a little bit heavier gauge just makes you have a, gives you a little bit better connection. And I'm going to strip off about an inch on one end, wrap that around one of the bolts. Uh, so you can see the bolt goes through the rebar, through the bucket, and then I'm going to wrap the wire around the outside of that bolt, put a nut on it, and lock it down. And then I'm going to run this wire around the outside of the bucket from bolt to bolt to bolt. And as I go to each bolt, I'm going to clean off a little bit of the insulation so I can wrap it around each bolt. It makes it fairly easy to, uh, to put a connection there. Lightly score the, uh, the insulation around the fabric, cut it from one end to the other, and you can expose a little bit on the middle of a wire. Wrap it around the bolt, put another washer and nut on there, and now the copper wire is connected to the bolt, which is connected to the rebar on the inside of the bucket. Continue this all the way around the bucket so that you have this one copper wire connecting to all of these bolts. Um, on the last one, you could just leave the bolt a little bit longer and then clamp your uh, positive on that, but I decided to actually uh, leave a nut on there. You can come in with the, the chisel and chop out a little bit here. Uh, we just want to give a, a rest for the rod that will be going across uh, from one to the other. 
um, just be careful not to hit the wire. Um, I ended up doing that, so I had to come back and uh, tape that so it didn't make a contact. This is actually a liquid electrical tape. Um, you can buy that and just to, to cover those up. You don't really need to. It just makes them pretty and makes it a little bit nicer. I made a wire basket out of uh, some aluminum screen. Uh, make sure it's aluminum so it conducts it, and that allows me to connect a wire to this crossbar. Oh, look, another crossbar. Um, but you could just put a wire on there and hang something on it like I did. Next, we're going to fill it full of water, and then I'm going to add in about a half cup of washing soda. Make sure you search for washing soda. I'll have a link to that down in the description. This is what allows the electricity to easily flow through the, uh, the liquid to get to the anode on the outside. Connect the black wire to the piece you are working on and the red wire to the outside. And then whatever you want, hang it from that middle bar and let it hang in the water. If there's a bunch of loose items, that's where I made that little aluminum basket. Wrap it around a bolt in the middle of the wire, and this will then allow you to pass electricity from the negative to the positive. Now here I have a battery charger. You need an old battery charger. Um, this is one that doesn't have any smarts, it doesn't have any brains, it just runs electricity and changes the voltage. Uh, if you have one that's smart, it'll say, wait a second, you didn't connect me to a battery and won't do what you want it to do. So you need an old battery charger. Usually if you go on uh, Facebook or Craigslist, you'll find them listed on there. Don't, uh, you probably won't be able to find them in a store and I haven't been able to find one on Amazon. The first thing you want to do is make sure you immediately wipe it off and then oil it up. We don't want to be getting any more rust on this. I only left this one in here for about an hour. It was enough to get off the rust but still leave that patina and finished look. I like that. Um, if I left it in there longer, I could make it even more shiny. So there you go. One more weapon in your arsenal against rust. I uh, hope this helped you out. It is a fun one to play around with. And once you get it up and running, there's a lot of things you can do with it. So there you go, we have our electrolysis bucket and a way to set it up. Now one of the nice things about this is I can, if I put these bolt holes down a little bit lower, I can put a lid on this and seal it and use it next time. Most of the time when I'm using it, I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of parts. Um, and so when I'm done with it, I'm just going to dump out the water because it only takes about a half cup of the washing soda to make this. Um, I'll just make up a new batch each, every time I do it. Um, and I really don't do this very often. It's something that comes out once a year or one maybe once every two years because there are other methods that I like for taking off rust. If you want to see those, I have several videos on how to restore uh, hand planes and tools and I'll go through rust removal on all those. But this is a fun one that a lot of people really, really like. And so I hope you like it. Um, if you do want to see information on all the parts and pieces, they are down in the description. And uh, I hope that helps. So I think that's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Oh no, what's happening? Power tools, electricity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>